So they, uh, most of our on-call supervisors that we have at this point um, are former caregivers um, that start out as caregiving. And some of them, they do maybe on-call on the weekend. They caregive during the week, um, you know, and kind of mix that up. But that's one of the things we like from a, from a we like to promote from within. Um, so a lot of times kind of our, our track for people is they do caregiving. And then we have an on-call position that comes available. We get applications for that. If people are really able to do well on on-call with the scheduling, dealing with clients and caregivers, it's going to be great with people, right, on the phone. Um, and then a field manager position opens. Um, we have, out of our 13 field managers, I believe seven of them that we have right now um, were formerly on-call supervised for that. Um, so it's really a really great track to kind of progress and grow and promote from within the company. Uh, and typically what will we get for, for on-call supervisors, it's people that um, a lot of times they have children um, and they're looking to have some kind of job. Maybe they have younger kids, a lot of, a lot of situations, um, and they don't want to, you know, they can't go into an office or anything like that. Um, and most, most of their interactions are after their kids are asleep. Um, or maybe they are in the evening some, but they've been with their kids during the day and they have a spouse that's, that's home and able to handle the kids more um, in the evening. Uh, so it's a really flexible position. Uh, and I see Daniel's actually asked a question that's kind of similar to this. Um, our on-call supervisors have an iPad um, and a phone um, and they do everything from their iPad. So like we have people that'll go away to camp for the weekend. Um, the one person we have, her family has a place out on this lake they have like a little camper on this lake um, and they go to that every weekend and as long as they are able to get service um, we do have one person that we got a little um, hot spot for um, but in general everybody's able to get some kind of cell service um, or wi-fi wherever they're at and then they can perform their job uh, from there and typically the way the way we have them do it is they're checking the schedule kind of at five o'clock um, they're checking the schedule at eight o'clock uh, they check the schedule at 11 o'clock at night. Um, that's the latest we require them to check it. And then they check it first thing in the morning, um, sometime before 8 o'clock, before they turn the phone back over to the um, to the field manager. So those four required times that we have them check, um, and that's worked out really well for us. Now, we do have situations where we may have, you know, one of the on-calls, there's a lot of clients maybe that, that have their shifts end at 10 o'clock at night. So they may be checking around 10, 15 to see if, if there's been any late clock outs or if there's a bunch of shifts starting at seven o'clock in the morning, you know, they'll, they'll check kind of closer to seven instead of it closer to eight o'clock. Um, so, so that's kind of the setup and the flexibility. It's great. It's really flexible. Um, I've, I've done on call before um, as well, uh, just to kind of get a sense of, of what it's like. Um, and I've done a couple different, a couple different weekends. I've never done it during weeknights, but I've done it during weekends. And there was a couple weekends where I almost forgot that I had to answer the phone. And there was a couple other weekends where I answered the phone a lot. Um, and, and generally our rule of thumb is, because people do call, right? We have shifts that end at one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. Um, there are calls and issues late at night like that. Um, and we ask our on-call, you know, when that happens. Um, typically we don't have them answer the phone at one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. Um, and our clients know, our caregivers know, they leave a voicemail. Our on-call will wake up, listen to that voicemail. They, they're required to have their phone on. Uh, listen to that voicemail. And if it's something pressing that they need to address at the time, they collect themselves so, like you said, they're not, not sounding groggy or anything like that on the phone. Um, and then they call whoever needed to and resolve that situation. doesn't happen a lot that we get, like, super dire pressing calls in the middle of the night between 11 and 7, but there are, there are some that do occur. Um, and a lot of times it's something that happened that they need to reach out to in the morning. Um, and they can do that first thing in the morning, reach out and make the call then. Um, but they are, they are required if it is, you know, we kind of have a set of criteria. If it is something major, they do answer it, you know, during that 11 p to 7 a.m. time. Mm -hmm.